This is a boss. <laughs> Obviously. I'm scared. Oh my god, look at his eyes. I get it. He has three forms. Electric form, wind form, snow form. He has three forms. A dancing lion. It's, um, Chinese. With the release of Elden Ring's DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree, most of our favorite streamers have challenged the newly added bosses. The first one most of them encountered is the Divine Beast Dancing Lion, and a lot of them died quite a few times. Well, just give me a second to like chill! Fuck! But I was wondering, at what pace do people improve at? Who dies the most and which attack is the deadliest? So I spent hours watching the fights of 15 different streamers measured how much of the health bar the boss had when they died and wrote down each attack that defeated them. Then I made graphs of their overall performance to see who did it best. I analyzed over 500 attempts and this video will showcase my results. The streamers that are unwillingly taking part in the study are as follows. Lyric, Amiru, Elias, Kedro, Distortion 2, Miss Mika, Asmongold, Shroud, XQC, Kaisenat, 39 Death, Ludwig, Point Crow, Forsen, and Koseki Bijou. But before we check how well they did, let's first talk about the boss. The Divine Beast Dancing Lion appears to be a huge beast, but it's actually two men in a costume. This makes his animations much harder to read, as he's able to twist his body and move in unpredictable ways. At around 70% of his health left, he will transition into his second phase, during which he wields one of three elements at all times, lightning, ice, or wind. Let's look at its moves so we can better understand what killed our beloved streamers. First, we have the boss's bread and butter, which are aptly named Bites. This is the lion's most common move, and it can look a bit different based on where you're positioned, but it is most of the time one or two quick swipes in front of him. Two other attacks that are similar but I've categorized differently often happen if you're further away from the boss. The lunge where it dashes forward while biting, or the jumping bite where it goes up in the air. Another very common attack would be the lion's main combo. It is made up of four parts. To start the move, the lion will jump backwards and start hovering in the air. He will then crash the ground twice before lifting his head and then finally breathe mist all around him. One final move that is important to highlight would be the grab. This is a devastating attack with a huge tail. The boss will bite the air twice before lunging forward and catching players. This can deal a huge chunk of your health bar, or actually outright kill you if you don't have much health, or very few scattery blessings. One detail about the grab is that it applies a debuff to the player that lasts about 30 seconds. The first time that you drink from your Estus flask during these 30 seconds, the boss will heal as well. And finally, we have a bunch of other moves that don't need much explanation. The head smash and head lift, the line breath and the spin breath. Please excuse me for these names, by the way. I'm not the most creative person. Then we have the crash, the tail sweep and the backflip. When the boss transitions, it also gains access to special elemental moves. These are the tornado for the wind, the frost thump for the ice, and the lightning spear for the, well, lightning. Oh, and there's one final attack, but we'll talk about it later. After referencing all the moves, I watched each streamer's every attempt, so I could draw their performance graph and see which attacks were the deadliest. As you can imagine, compiling the data for this video was a daunting task. So if you appreciate the content, be sure to subscribe for more. Let's start with two of the most average people on this list, Lyric and Emiru. Lyric fought the boss with three scattered tree blessings at level 172 and was wielding a Dragon King's Crackblade and an Earth Tree Great Shield. He was the only one out of the 15 streamers with a shield and actually used it quite efficiently. It allowed him to block some attacks that might have been hard to time a roll on otherwise. He ended up dying to the boss 27 times and while we watched the rest of his winning attempt, we can look at the attacks that killed him the most. 37% of his deaths were to the bites, 26% to the combo, with the fourth part of it, the spinning breath, being the deadliest one. We can see from his graph that his first few attempts he struggled to get the boss into second phase, but once he figured it out, he was getting more consistent at getting there. In the end, he focused and emerged victorious. That's what I'm fucking talking about, bro. They said change the build, but I ain't no bitch. 
So I know you might be thinking that all the graphs are gonna look exactly like this one, with a somewhat steady progression curve, but you'd be surprised. Emiru had two scattertree blessings at level 163 and was wielding a fully upgraded Bloodhound Sphinx. She was the only streamer to actually die from some real life interference. So I got the Route 44 Sonic drink. It's bigger than my head. I'm not drinking all this, no fing way, but I just wanted it. I guess she did, in fact, not drink all of it. As for her performance, she wasn't dealing too much damage to the boss with her normal attacks, but when bleed procced, that dealt a good chunk of damage, which made it more doable. She died 26 times, but her progression curve is a little less steady. She got the boss to second phase in about 60% of fights, the lightning phase in particular seemed to elude her, and was responsible for over 34% of her deaths. The boss's combo claimed her life 30% of the time the second part of it being the deadliest. An attack that is admittedly quite hard to time, as the boss kind of just hovers in the air. She also died to the bites five times, mainly due to her aggressive playstyle. This same aggressive playstyle, however, was what made her be able to beat the boss on her 27th attempt. Now that we have a basis, let's look at some people who just did incredible and beat the boss in only a few tries. Our top 3 performers are Elias, Kedril, and Distortion 2. Let's look at Ella first. He entered the boss arena wielding a fully upgraded Executioner's Heavy Great Axe, with two scattery blessings at level 146. He did get killed by the second part of the combo during his first run, but adapted quickly and beat the boss on his second try. Ella is a very experienced souls player, and it shows during that fight. Even when he doesn't know the moves, he tends to favor rolling into the boss over rolling away from it. You can also see that he doesn't take too much damage, probably due to having the Great Shield Talisman equipped. A really great choice to go through the DLC. And finally, he also dodges attacks in real life, which might give him some sort of iframe buff. More research is required on that one. A remembrance even, nice. Another person that did surprisingly well was Kedro. But he's just poking a run and stick me in the wall. If anyone can for sure tell me what he said there, I'd be very grateful. He was also level 146, but had five skeletry blessings due to exploring the eastern side before coming here. After an unfortunate encounter with the wall during his first attempt, he got back up and actually played pretty well, dodging some crucial attacks throughout the fight. His performance is an important reminder that gathering scattery blessings is crucial to going through the DLC. It's easier learning a boss when you don't get one shot by every move. First try! I told you! First try! I told you! Distortion 2 is next, and since he fought the boss before, when playing the test version, he had some wise knowledge to share. You can see this guy's butt sometimes, by the way. We haven't seen it yet. Dist was using a combination of the Ritual Shield and the Great Shield Talisman, with a decent armor, meaning despite only having a free scattery blessings, he was negating quite a lot of damage. His character was also level 200, the highest out of the 15 streamers, and he was wielding a newly added DLC weapon, the Black Steel Great Hammer. He did die three times, but overall the fights were rather clean, since he already had some kind of understanding of the flow of the boss. Oh yeah, he did. If we continue down the people with a little more attempts, we have Miss Mika, Asmongold, Shroud, and XQC. Mika is first, and she went in at level 151 with zero scattery blessings as part of the challenge she set upon herself. She was wielding a cold backhand blade and died four times to the boss. She actually perished to the attack that I haven't described yet. It took me a while to notice it as a separate move as it's pretty rare, but when the lion is low on HP, it can start doing this transition combo during which he will switch between all three elements ending with a frost stomp. A really cool, desperate move from the boss that managed to claim her life once. On her next try, however, she managed to silence the lion's roar. Woo! That was try number five, I think. That was epic. Asmongold only had one scattery blessing at level 166. 
He was wielding a golden halberd in one hand and a gargoyle halberd in the other one. He died 7 times, 4 of his deaths being due to the third part of the combo, as he was tanky enough to survive the second part, but would get staggered into the head lift. He also quickly realized that he could jump the last part of it to punish the boss in an efficient manner. His playstyle was very aggressive, but due to having a fairly decent build and multiple crucial dodges on the most damaging attacks, he was able to fail the beast in only 8 attempts. What a sucker that was, huh? Moving on to Shroud. His performance is a bit unique, as he tried to beat the lion about a dozen times, then went to do other things and forgot about it. I know what to do, and I'm excited. I need to get a couple items, though. He came back around 10 hours later, at level 151, with 5 scattery blessings and using Milady. Despite that, Shroud quickly improved when fighting the boss. He was also much more vocal about his thought process, so it was clearer when he was trying to keep an attack in mind or figure out a way to dodge something. This made him less likely to get caught by the same attack in the same way twice in a row. The grab still got him 3 times and he died a total of 12 times, but his victory was rather one-sided as he had 9 flasks left when he beat the boss. XQC beat the boss with two scattery blessings at level 141, wielding a heavy giant crusher. He died 24 times and has one of the most unique progression curve. Well, I can't see anything. Well, I can't see anything. He started off quite strong and then slowly but surely got worse over time. He was oftentimes very aggressive and jump attacking without waiting for the boss to attack first, resulting in him dying from the bites about 37% of the time. He and Forsen were actually the two streamers who died to the bites the most often, but more on that later. Only towards the end did he start to perform better, mainly because he removed his soul seal, but also because he started playing even more aggressive and focusing on breaking the boss's poise as much as possible with his Ash of War. While it seemed pretty inconsistent at first, it eventually paid off. Boom! Boom! On the first try! Now for some people who did a little bit worse than average. Kai Senat, 39 death, and Ludwig. Let's start with Kai. He had two scarify blessings at level 157 and was using two fully upgraded katanas, rivers of blood in one hand and a blood-infused Naga Kiba in the other. The most surprising part of his performance was his clarity and insight going into it. For those who don't know how Elder Ring works, your first try will be your best try in the next 100 tries. Very wise words indeed. What's really funny is that he did get 3 really good attempts at the beginning and then proceeded to die a total of 34 times anyway. As usual the bites were quite deadly, but as we are now looking at some people with more attempts, attacks like the backflip or the lunge are starting to kill more often. The backflip is actually quite fast and deals a ton of damage. And since the windup is different than most of the other attacks, it can be hard to detect. It claimed Kai's life 4 times, but eventually the man locked in. Yes! Get 39 Death faced the Dancing Lion at level 152 with 2 scattery blessings and wielding a keen godskin pillar in one hand and a cold twin blade in the other. Something I haven't included in my analysis is how many times people die to getting stuck in the corner, but if I did, she'd definitely be at the top. Yeah, I can't, okay, I can't see. I don't know if I, should I unlock? Aside from that, the last part of the combo caused her to die more often than other streamers, mainly because she would often go for a jump attack a little bit too early and land into the smoke. She almost never died to the wind phase, but the lightning phase was responsible for more than half of her deaths in phase 2. After 46 deaths, however, her self-proclaimed dentist build extracted the lion's fang. Jesus, okay, I, I, I need to, oh my god, I need, I need to get my <gasps> Um, she just left. On to Ludwig, who fought the boss at level 139 with 4 skeletal fragments and using the Dragon Hunter's Great Katana. Well, he actually started off with a different build and only one blessing, but after 20 attempts, he left and went exploring for new gear and more scattery blessings. By doing this, he significantly increased his chance of beating the boss, since he was taking far less damage and could actually learn the moves more easily. The funny thing is, when he came back, he actually did really well for a few attempts and then got back to exactly where he was with his previous build. After exactly 50 deaths though, he slaughtered those two men in a costume. 
Come on! Oh, f yeah! And finally, the worst three performers out of all of the streamers I analyzed. Point Crow, Volsen, and Koseki Bijou. Let's start with Point Crow. Now I'm not really being fair by ranking him solely based on his deaths, because of one major difference compared to other streamers. Point Crow actually played the DLC in New Game Plus, meaning enemies were dealing and mitigating more damage than for everyone else. Him only having one scattery blessing also didn't help, especially since his character was only level 153. He was using the Bloodhound Fang and Morgoth's Curse Sword, both fully upgraded. He died 66 times on the boss, with the most common reason being the combo, the bites and the grab. Something really cool to see when looking at how he died is that the grab and the combo were much deadlier during his early fights, but once he was able to learn how to play around them, more deaths were caused by the bites or other various attacks. His graph is also quite revealing, especially when looking at the train line, as we can see steady progression until he finally managed to beat the boss. Next up, we got Forsen. Forsen is in a category of his own. He was the lowest level out of anyone here at level 106. He only had one scattery blessing and his flasks were only plus five, which is around a 25% handicap as opposed to a fully upgraded flask. He refused to go back and collect sacred tears, so that's how his flask will be during the entire DLC. He also had a soul seal equipped, which is usually not a very good thing to have during the late game as the lower damage negation tends to outvalue the flat stats it gives. I can't see, man! <laughs> boss! With all of these debuffs on top of each other, we're reaching challenge run territory in terms of difficulty when fighting the boss. He had no room for error. A grab, for example, would kill him from full health, so he died a lot from that. As opposed to other streamers, he was also just as likely to die from the combo during his first three attempts than during the later ones. However, whereas most people died about the same amount of times from the combo than from the bites, he died twice as much from the bites, probably because of the insane amount of damage they were dealing to him. In total, he died 76 times, but we still see steady progression in his graph. And finally, we have Koseki Bijou. She was level 136 with two blessings and using a fully upgraded Moon Veil. How do I not get angry? Because the bosses are fun to learn, <laughs> I guess. Once again, very wise words. She was, however, wearing very light armor and using a scorpion charm, making her the person taking the most damage from all of the lion's moves. The grab, the second part of the combo, and the backflip would all kill her in one hit. The bites, in two hits. Because of that, it took her quite a long time to be able to learn each one of the boss's moves. But she didn't give up, even after dying 128 times. You can see from her graph that she was somewhat improving after every attempt. There would always be attempts, where she got one shot early on into a fight though, so that's why her line stays rather high until the end. She actually got the absolute two closest attempts out of anyone on her 110th attempt and her 128th attempt, with the latter leaving the boss with less than 1% HP remaining. But she didn't falter, and the following time she entered that fog gate, she meant business. Now that we've looked at every single individual performance, we can see which moves and phases were the ones to look out for. Out of 500 total deaths, 124 of them were to the bites. That's close to 25%. The combo is another big one, being the reason for a little more than 25% of all deaths. Finally, we have the grab being responsible for 67 deaths, about 13%. As for the phases, 63% of deaths were to the first phase, about 9% to the wind form, 15% to the lightning form, and 12% to the ice one. If we put most of the graphs side by side, it is quite impressive to see that almost everyone steadily improves over the course of their attempts. There's also a trend of having a few really bad attempts right before the winning one. After defeating this lion, most streamers moved on to Relana. So if you want to see that in the next video, be sure to let me know. Thank you all for watching.